Hi everyone, I'm Cornelius from Quantum Investing and thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. In this second video in my Investing for Beginners series, I'll be talking to you about investing in the different types of fund products and talking you through the benefits they can bring to your portfolio. If you're new to this channel and missed the first video on how to invest in stocks and shares, please make sure you check out the video from the info card above or via the link in the description below. And before we get started, please like or hit the subscription button below to be informed on new videos which I issue out on a weekly basis. My channel is about stock market investing and I'm sure it's going to help you on your journey. So let's get started with a bit of background on funds. A fund is a basket of different securities that are pulled together and traded in the stock market. In layman's terms, think about it like a fruit salad, right? So where one share is a fruit, say an orange, and then the fund is a fruit salad bowl which has got different fruits in it. So instead of buying a share, an orange, you want to buy a fund which is a fruit salad bowl. Investing in funds is one of the most popular ways to start investing for beginners. And this is because funds give you instant exposure and diversification across different security and asset classes. Whether it's equities, which is stocks and shares, commodities, property, infrastructure, bonds, as shown in the illustration. Such diversification is why beginners and experienced investors will choose to invest their money in funds. Because relatively speaking, it is a safer route than buying one share where you shoulder the risk all alone. So rather than buying one share or two company shares, the fund will give you access to a basket of many different companies, typically between 20 to up to 200 or even more. So if something went wrong with an individual company share, you will definitely feel the pain in your portfolio. But if something goes wrong with one of the companies in a fund portfolio, it would have loads of other companies which hopefully are doing well to be able to cushion that blow. Funds also provide a broader selection of investment opportunities and greater management expertise that investors might be able to obtain on their own. Funds are divided into two major categories, active and passive investment funds. So let's start with the active side. Active funds are run by professional fund managers who select the investments and aim to beat the benchmark index or outperform the broader stock market. These fund managers have access to loads of research which they used to actively make decisions on when to buy or sell with the aim that they deliver returns that are better than the stock market. The thing is, the level of management comes at a price and you will often pay more for that privilege. The fees for actively managed funds can typically range from 0.7% to up to 3 or even more depending on your fund manager. And active funds are subdivided again into two other categories, mutual funds and investment trusts. So looking at mutual funds, mutual funds create new shares when someone invests money or will cancel the units when someone withdraws their cash. And managers who run these funds have to deal with inflows and outflows of investors' money, as well as deciding what to have in the portfolio. Mutual funds are only priced once a day, so you will not have the flexibility to trade in and out of them on a daily basis. But given, and I'm hoping you're looking to invest for the long term, then this should not really be a barrier for you. On the other hand, investment trusts have fixed number of shares in issue and investors wanting to get involved have to buy shares from one another or another investor. But you need to be aware that all this activity happens within the investment platform, so you don't need to worry about this. So you may be asking yourself, so what's the difference? And I totally agree with you because I was asking the same question when I first started. They have subtle differences around the mechanics of how the share units are priced against the underlying assets versus the markets and also how they are funded through either debt or gearing to be able to magnify their returns. So for a beginner, I will not worry too much about this at this stage unless you're torn be between making a choice based on the role whether of a mutual fund or an investment trust will play in your portfolio. I know by now you're thinking this is far too complicated, but trust me, it isn't at all. It gets even more interesting when we look at passive funds, which we'll get to into. But do me a favor, if you're finding value in this video so far, please click the like button, drop me a comment below with any questions you may have because I'm looking to get your feedback to be able to build more relevant content. I appreciate that. Thank you. Up next is the second category of funds, which is the passive funds category. Passive funds, unlike active funds, means they are passive, right? So the fund manager does not need to decide what assets to buy as they are predetermined by the underlying index they are tracking. Nor does the manager have to decide how much security to own as this is also determined by its weight in the online index. Passive funds have seen huge growth over the last 10 years and this has led to an explosion of products that track market indices and allow investors to gain exposure to large parts of the market 
at a very, very little cost. So within the passive side as well, there are two types of passive funds, the index tracker funds and exchange tracker funds. First off, the index tracker funds, which track the performance of global market benchmarks or indices such as the US S&P 500, NASDAQ Composite, or UK FTSE 100, and many others. Index funds aim for a steady performance rather than trying to maximize returns, which active funds would do. And they typically have lower charges than active funds and are increasingly grow in popularity as investors like you or myself seek the lowest cost of investing. Now let's take a deeper dive at this and bring it to life for you. I think it's important we go past all the theory into the real stuff and keep it real with potential investors like yourself. So let's take a look at the US S&P 500 index, for example, which is one of the largest global indices with over $30 trillion of assets, and it also represents about 80% of the US stock market. As you can see, it is very diversified with 11 sectors. It may also come as a surprise to you that, given the share size of the index, its performance is determined by just a handful of stocks. The big technology names, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, which collectively represent about 20% of the entire S&P index in value. So over the last five years, the S&P has grown by over 70% and is staggering 194% over the last 10 years. So what this really means is that an index fund tracking the S&P 500 over the same period would have similar returns. So if you had invested $1,000 or £1,000 in 2015 and done virtually nothing and sat on your hands for the market and your money to work for you, you would be looking at a set of 70% growth in your portfolio. I'm personally not sure I could get that kind of return if this cash was sat in my bank. So some really cool stuff there by investing made easy for beginners by just tracking the market and doing nothing else. There are many advocates for index fund investing, including a renowned investment guru, Warren Buffett. So is hugely popular from newbies to very experienced people. So we've gone through the S&P 500 as an example, but it's worth noting that there are many other global indices and they have different sector compositions. So it's really important to dig deeper to understand the constituent sectors as the overall performance of the index are mostly influenced by the heavy weights the sectors hold. So using another example, the US-based Nasdaq Composite Index. It's another widely followed index in the world. The 10 largest companies comprise about 35% of the index and is dominated by technology businesses which represent over 50% of the entire Nasdaq index. The FTSE 100 index holds the largest 100 publicly quoted companies in the UK market and is dominated by oil and gas, about 18% of it, financials, another 18%, consumer goods representing 17%. So as you can see, the different major indices have different constituents and consequently different levels of performance. So I encourage you to do your research to be very clear uncomfortable with the constituent sectors before you even consider investing in any of them. Next up is the other and final passive fund, exchange traded funds, which are equally a low cost asset class. They are very similar to index funds in that they invest in a pool of assets and provide exposure to a particular theme or market. The main difference is that they can also invest into broader asset classes such as companies, commodities, bonds, currencies or options or blend of different other assets which index funds do not invest in. Exchange traded funds or ETFs as they're called trade on the stock exchange and you can buy or sell them during the trading hours as you would do for any share. In recent years, ETFs have become increasingly popular with retail investors like you and me, partially due to the low cost, but also because of the fact that many active fund managers fail to beat the benchmark despite charging huge fees, which eat into our returns. Globally, the ETF market is worth about $7 trillion, of which about $4.6 trillion is US listed. And one of the reasons why ETFs are so popular in the US is that they offer investors a tax advantage, which gives them an edge compared to active US mutual funds. In addition, the rise of more online investment offerings coming to the market from low-cost providers has triggered price competition where advisors who are traditionally used actively managed funds are now moving towards the lower-cost ETF offerings. I know we have covered a lot of detail on the different types of funds, but what is most important is that as a minimum, you are aware of the composition of the funds and the associated costs charges before you even start your investment journey. The sheer breadth 
of options available can be overwhelming and confusing as I experienced when I first started. But what's most important is that you're aware of what they constitute, their role in your portfolio, and any potential implications. I would also like to show you how fees and charges can vary dramatically and have a big impact to your returns over the long term. So there are transaction fees, which are the one-off costs of buying and selling an investment. But in addition to that, there are also ongoing charges for funds, which is the total expense ratio or TER, which you will see in the, on the platform provider's pages for maintaining the funds. If you invest in a cheaper tracker fund, you could pay about 0.05% or less. But if you want to pay for a fund manager to actively run your fund, you will pay up to pay around 0.75 to up to 3%. Clearly, this is not comparing apples for apples as you get different levels of investment with each, but the impact of cost could be factored into your decision making of what investment choices you make. So make sure that if you're paying more, you're actually getting something and better in return. The example shows how fees would impact a $10,000 or a £10,000 investment over a 10, 20 or 30 year period for different charges. While the difference in the charges is only 0.1%, you can clearly see that the difference over a 10 year period and how it amplifies over the 30 year horizon is quite significant. The 0.2% gap between the 0.2% charge and 0.45% charge over a 30 year period amplifies to a staggering $22,000, which is significant and should be part of your funds and returns as opposed to charges or fees paid to your fund manager. So when do your research, please make sure to lift the bonnet to understand the charges and what they're composed of. If you found value from this video, please subscribe, leave me a comment on what you want to see more of to get the most value of my tutorial series. It really makes me really happy to know that you're deciding or considering to build your wealth by investing in the stock market as you and only you are responsible for your investment. Coming up next in my series is how to build your first $1,000 portfolio. So please press the button below to be notified when it becomes available or if you've missed my first video on how to start your stock market investment journey you can also access it from the description below so thank you so much for being here have a good day and watch out for my next video thank you